If you got your Bible, hold it up or hold whatever you can up, and let's make our confession of faith. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says that I can do. I can have what it says that I can have. Today, I will be taught the uncompromised Word of God. My mind is alert, and my heart is receptive. I will not leave the same as I came in Jesus' name. And every time I come to Church on the Rock, my faith and my life get stronger and stronger. Give the Lord a big praise, would you? Oh, thank you, Lord. Y'all sound so good today. Isn't it great to live a life of praise? Amen, church. That was last month. Amen. Well, this month is the mission of Church on the Rock. The mission of Church on the Rock. And you know, as a church, we have a mission collectively. And you as an individual, God has a mission for you personally. And the big question I think all of us ask if you haven't, you will at one time or another in your life, and that's this question. The big question is this, why am I here? The why. Well, if you haven't asked yourself that question, I know that you will, because that's the big question. Why on earth am I here? Mark Twain said the two biggest days of our life, Mark Twain said, number one is the day that you were born and number two, the day you find out why you were born. The why is our purpose. The why is the reason we get up every morning. All of us need a why. We need to know why on earth God put us here for such a time as this. Your why or your mission or your purpose is your motivation, is your motive for what you do. So the motive for Church on the Rock, 36 years ago, planning it with 35 people in the, in the library at St. Peter's, the mission then has always been the mission now. And let me show you what it is. If you're new to our church, the why of Church on the Rock is to lead people to a God who is for them and help them discover his purpose for their life. So the why of Church on the Rock is to help you find out why God put you here on this earth at this time. Your why is your purpose. And you, you need to know your purpose because it will give you power to get through what you're going through today. You need to know your purpose because in knowing your purpose, it will help you tap into your potential. And everybody in this room, in this sanctuary, and everybody online, you all have God-given potential residing on the inside of you. God's a creator, and God created everything, and He created everything with a purpose and on purpose. So if that's true, and it is, God created you and God created me. And we're not mistakes. So God created us on purpose, but he created us for a purpose. And if we don't find out the why, we won't have the motivation that we need to get through tough times. If we don't know the purpose or the why, we won't know the meaning, the real meaning to life. You know someone's purpose, you really find it out at their funeral, what their purpose really was. Now, I had originally had our guys check with a local funeral home, and they were going to loan me a casket. And I was going to, yeah, that's what I thought. And I was going to put it up here, and I thought, man, that'd be an illustrated sermon. Wow, shazam, as the theologian Gomer Pyle would say. And I thought, man, that's really going to really gonna hit it home. But then I thought, I, I actually told the guy, I say, call him Friday. I just can't handle a casket in the front of the altar. But I've done a lot of funerals in all these years of ministry. And some of the funerals that I've done, we had to work hard, really work hard, at finding something good to say about that person. 
We, we had to try to ask the family, and nobody would want to say anything. Uh, friends, nobody. We had to really work hard. There have been those funerals that, that, that when people lined up to come by the casket, and I would stand, they'd just sweep by. And, and you couldn't find, it was really hard to find anything good to be said about that person lying in the casket. Then there have been those other funerals that I've done where, where everybody and their dog, you know what I mean by that? I mean, aunts and uncles and, 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 and friends and acquaintances and peers, they all, can, can I say something? I've got a poem. I've got a story uh, how he or she impacted my life. Oh, I love those kind of funerals. I mean, if you've got to have a funeral, I, I love those kind of funerals because the greatest tragedy in life is not death. The greatest tragedy in life is to live life without a purpose. The greatest tragedy is not death. The greatest tragedy is to live our life without purpose. And so uh, I want to be the one, and you want to be the one, that we live a life that's meaningful. And we want to know our God-given purpose, and we want to tap into our potential kind of heaven. Amen. And we want to finish strong to the Lord, Terry. And at your funeral and my funeral, we don't want it to be hard to find something good to be said about us. Because whatever they're saying, that was our purpose. Wow. So we need to know our why. People who don't know their why, they change constantly. People who don't know their why, listen up, Church Online uh, Campus, Church on the Rock. People who don't know their why, they're constantly changing for the wrong reasons. They're constantly going from relationship to relationship. They're constantly going from job to job. They're constantly moving from state to state. They're constantly changing friends, relationships, jobs, and churches. Because they're looking for something that will satisfy, complete, and fulfill them. And then they find out that it doesn't. It leaves them empty. Do you know why there's that emptiness? Because they haven't discovered their why. They haven't discovered their God-given purpose. People with a God-given purpose who have discovered it, they base all their decisions and changes on that purpose. Well, I hope you heard what I said. They base all their choices and their decisions based on that purpose. People who know their God-given why and purpose, they're stable, they're strong, they're standing, they're steadfast, they're unmovable. They're not wandering through life. They are winning, 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 winning in life. So the big thing that I want to give to you today, Pastor, when you get to the Scriptures, I'm on my way there. I'm, I'm traveling. Give me some time now, okay? But here's the big thing. Everybody say big thing. Here's the big thing of all month. Here's the big thing right here. Nothing matters more than knowing your God-given purpose. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. Nothing matters more, more. This is the most important thing you can know, knowing God's purpose for your life. And you know what? That's the mission of our church. Right, Doug? That's the mission of our church. That's what we've been doing for 36 years. Right, Diane? 36 years we've been helping people find out that God is for them. God is a good God. God is not against them. God is not their problem. God is for them. And then letting them know that God has a purpose for their life. And then helping them discover that purpose. That's the mission of our church. That's why we give. That's why we serve. That's why we pray. That's why we fast. That's why we work hard at getting better every day. Because we have a big mission. Right? So, so look what it says again. To lead people. Oh, I like that. Don't let that just go over your head. To lead people. To lead people. Okay, Pastor, we get it. No, I don't think you do. To lead people. It doesn't say to lead white people. Should I go there? It doesn't say to lead brown people. It doesn't say to lead black people. It doesn't say to lead rich people. It doesn't say to lead poor people, educated people, non-educated people. It simply says to lead people. 
it doesn't say to favor and lead people who watch Fox News. It doesn't say to lead people and love people who watch CNN. Have you noticed something? If you've been around here for a while, if you're new to our church, you'll find out I don't talk politics. Never have. You know, we've had, uh, we had George Bush want to come here when he was running for president. We had President Obama want to come here. When he was we had, we had, goes all the way back, you know, 700 Club, Pat Robinson. All the candidates, most of them down through the years running for president, wanted to stop in here and wanted the platform. And it's not that I'm against politics. I think Christians should vote. And I think Christians should be involved in government. Oh, yeah, yes, amen. But politics, <laughs> They are not the answer to help people find freedom, discover their purpose, and make a difference with their life. Come on, somebody. Politics is not the answer for St. Louis. Religion is not the answer for St. Louis. Racism is not the answer for St. Louis. Us against them is not the answer for St. Louis. Education, and I'm pro-education, is not the answer for St. Louis. More money, economics, is not the answer for St. Louis. The answer for St. Louis is a strong local church that's lifting up Jesus Christ as Lord over St. Louis. Come on, somebody, give the Lord a praise. Amen. So, so you know, uh, somebody said to me years ago, they said, well, you know, I kind of like your church. You know, it's not my church anyway. But they said, you know, I kind of like your church. This is way back over in the other building. I kind of like your church because, you know, I'm colorblind. And I said to them, I'll pray for you. Because I'm not colorblind. I'm coming over here. I am not colorblind. We celebrate every color of the rainbow God made. Come on, somebody. Didn't he? I'm colored. I'm white. I mean, white is a color. Brown is a color. Black is a color. God made the rainbow. We're supposed to celebrate one another and then learn to understand one another because we don't know what each other's going through unless we've walked in their shoes. Come on, somebody. Is it right? I, I, I like what Daniel teaches on Wednesday nights, my son, and he's executive pastor, and he teaches on Wednesday nights. I encourage you to come. And someone, he was teaching Wednesday night, and someone hollered out, uh, Daniel, that's right and tight. Well, I guess that means cool. <laughs> See, I need to know what right and tight means, amen. But I assumed it's cool, amen, right? That's tight, amen. So, so, so we're, we're talking about our mission. We're talking about our why. And, and I'm going to share with you, if you'll give me just a few more minutes, I'm going to absolutely change your life today. You ready for this? Absolutely. I'm going to give you four questions that's going to help you know God's purpose for your life. Four. So, so l l let's just, let me give you some one-liners. Can I do it? Nothing matters. This is the big thing, right? Everybody say big thing. Nothing matters more than knowing God's purpose for your life. Without purpose, there's no direction. There's no reason. And there's no meaning to life. The greatest tragedy is not death, but it's life without a purpose. Wow. Without purpose, you make decisions based on popular opinion, pressure, and circumstances. Without purpose, life has no meaning, significance, or hope. You've got to believe that God created you on purpose and for a purpose. Why do I have to believe that, Pastor? People have told me that I'm a nobody, that I'm a has-been, that, that I'm a throwaway, that I'm a castaway, that I'm the wrong color, I have the wrong education, the wrong side of the tracks. People are always running me down. That's people. That's not God. Because God is for you. 
Amen, church. God is for you. And so let's look at it. Let's go to Mark chapter 8 real quick. Mark 8 and verse 34. It's on the overheads. And when he called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever will come after me, whoever will come after me, you see, you got to believe that God has a purpose for your life because your belief system creates your behavior, your behavior. And your behavior is a preview of coming attractions of what you're becoming. That's huge. So what I believe determines my behavior. And my behavior, how I act, determines what I'm becoming. So if I want to change what the world tells me I'm becoming, I've got to change and get a different mindset. I've got to have a shift from the culture to God's Word. And that God's for me. And that God has a purpose for my life. And that's the why. So he said, follow me. He said, whoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. So whatever I'm following today is forming my life. Two words, letter F. Whatever I'm following, if I'm following the world, then I'm becoming like the world. If I'm following God, then I'm becoming like God. So whatever I'm following, whoever I'm following, the thing, the person, the trend, the big idea, whatever I'm following, that's forming my life. Jesus said, follow after me. Next verse, watch this now. For whosoever, look at the words in yellow, for whosoever will save your life will lose it. And that's an oxymoron. I don't understand that, God. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose your life, what? For my sake and the gospel, the same will save it. If you just read that, that's confusing. That doesn't make sense in the natural, but let's break it down and let's ask the Holy Spirit, what's that mean? So notice he said that whosoever will save his life, uh, circle, mark, highlight the word save, it means find, find. Whoever will find their life. What do you mean, pastor? Find the life, the purpose, the why that God created you for. How cool is that? And notice, my family, that you won't find it in the world. You won't find it through TV. You won't find it through social media. You're going to find out the life that God intended you to live in Him. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, I love it, and verse 2, it says in the Living Bible, it says your real life. Everyone say real life. Uh, Let's say it again. Your real life. Oh, man, like Coke, the real thing. Your real life, real life, real life is found in Christ. Oh, my goodness. It's not found in the culture. It's not found in the trends. It's not found, you know, in social media. It's not found on television. It's found in Christ. So so I got three points here. Number one, you have to find your life. You have to find your life. This is huge. You have to find yourself. You have to find out why, the why, the big why, the reason, the means, the the meaning. Why are you here? The purpose. So whoever finds their life, then the next thing he says, you got to lose your life. What does that mean? That means you got to you got to go all in. You got to go all in. You got to go all the way. You can't go halfway. You can't go one foot in the world and one foot in the church. You can't compromise. You can't be a blended, carnal, compromising Christian and live a purposeful life where at your death and my death, the Lord Terry, and they walk by our casket, and they're going to be there till the cows come home talking about how God used your life to impact others. Wow. So number one, you got to save your life. What does that mean? Find your life. You got to find out the life that God wants you to live, not what other people want you to live. You got to find out the life that God wants you to live. And you know, Kim and I, when God called us into the ministry, going back to leading people to a God is for them, in 1976, we were in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hello, Minneapolis. And we were in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and we were going to college there, and we visited a church downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota, back in the 70s, called the Jesus People Church. you got to find yourself. you got to find the life God wants you to have and live. 
And we went to this church, and, and I'm an Iowa farm boy from a little town in Iowa. I'd never been to a church like this before. It ran thousands back in the 70s during the Jesus People Movement. And we walked into this church to visit it on a Sunday morning. There were thousands of people there. If I'm lying, I'm frying. This is in the 70s. Downtown Minneapolis, there were thousands of people there. But you know what? They were all different colors. I'd never seen anything like that. And if I'm lying, I'm frying. They, they had, uh, had three-piece suits on, and then there were people with shorts and flip-flops on. There were, there were street people there, and seriously, when they were raising their hand, I could see it. Uh, there were bling-bling Rolex watches flashing all over the place. I'd never seen anything like that. You have to find yourself, and then you have to lose yourself. You have to find your life, then lose your life. Uh, what are you saying, Pastor? I don't understand. So we were sitting there that day, and I'm looking around at black people, brown people, white people, worshiping the Lord together, and it was authentic. It was the real deal. All different backgrounds. I'd never been exposed to that. I'd never seen that before. And God was doing something big in my life. He was showing me the life that he called me to. I'll never forget it. I turned to Kim. I said, Kim, this is the kind of church we want a pastor back in the 70s. Oh, come on, somebody. Isn't God good? So everybody say, I've got to find my life, and then I've got to lose my life. Yeah, what does it mean? You've got to go all in. You've got to go whole hog. You've got to go all the way. You've got to be totally committed. Wow. And, and then the third thing, notice he said, uh, whoever will find their life and then lose your life, you pour your life into that life God has for you, the purpose and the why. Whoever shall lose your life for my sake and the gospels, the same will save it. Do you all see that? Save it? Well, if you have an amplified version of the Bible, it says, for an eternal difference, for God's eternal kingdom. So number one, you have to find your life. Number two, you have to lose your life. Number three, so you can make an eternal, 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 eternal difference with your life. How cool is that, church? That's what our church is all about. That's why we have uh, small groups. That's why we have growth track. Now, Pastor, you said you were going to give us four. I had somebody out in the lobby last night said, you came through, you gave us those four questions. So I better do it, hadn't I, or I'll get tarred and feathered. Amen. So here's how you find your purpose. You ready? Here's how you find your purpose. Heads up. At home, put the coffee down. Put the orange juice down. Put that white powdered donut down. Okay? Put it down right now. Get ready. to Take a note because here's how you find God's purpose for your life. Four questions. The first question is this. What moves me? What moves me? Guy's got it up there for us. What moves me? What's that, Pastor? That's our heart. What's that, Pastor? John Maxwell calls it passion. 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 What moves you? That day in 1976, when I saw that church, I, oh, it moved me. It touched me. I said, this is what church should be like. This is what the kingdom of God is going to look like in heaven. This, it moved me. It, it touched me. It moved me. So, so how to find God's purpose, God's call, God's assignment, God's why, God's reason that you're on earth today at this time is you got to ask yourself the question, what moves me? What touches my heart? What am I passionate about? You with me, church? Okay. Then number two, you ask yourself the question, what am I good at? What am I good at? Now, this is huge because you can, you can have a heart for something, but if you're not good at it, that's not your why. I'm coming over here. Uh, I want to communicate. You know, this morning I'm taking my shower. At 4.30, I'm up. I'm excited about church. I'm excited about you. I'm excited about sharing the why. I'm excited about helping you discover your why and your purpose. I'm excited about what God's going to do. And I'm in the shower at 4.30, and you know what I'm doing? I'm singing. A joyful song. Well, they let me sing there, but they won't let me sing on the platform. Now, I'm passionate about singing. I love music, and I love singing. Are you good at it, Pastor? Nope. So that's not my why. That's not my purpose. It's more than just being passionate. It's more than just having a heart for it. It's more than just being moved. you got to ask yourself, what am I good at? You know what that is, family? I'm hustling. As the team comes out, that's your skill set. 
That's your gifting. Everybody in this room, everybody online, you have a gift from God. Yeah. So you, you want to know what that is. Well, Pastor, I don't know what it is. Well, stick around for 11 o'clock right over here in our growth track. And today is the day we help you give you. We give you a test to find your gift. Every month we do that in growth track. How cool is that? Then we have small groups to help you find your your skill set, your gift. So, so uh, how are we going to find our why, 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 why? I sound like those birds at Disney. Why, 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 why? Is by asking ourselves, what moves me? Can you say that with me? Number two is, what am I good at? This is how you find your purpose. Number three is, what are my opportunities? What are my opportunities? I was talking to a brother before church today, and he was telling me about, he said, I'm just praying and looking for a God-given opportunities. I'm being aware. I'm being tuned in. I'm, I'm being keen to. I'm looking for God-given opportunities in my life. And, and he said, God's bringing them. So you look around for what's lying before you. My pastor, Tommy Barnett, said there's a miracle in your house. What do you have in your house today? Just look around for an opportunity. Uh, uh, we have these at our doors. Change the world with kindness. It's a random act of kindness. How cool are they, right? Christmas colors. You can take as many as you want, church. It's a nice little card that when you give a good tip today. <laughs> and all the waitresses and waiters said, yeah. When you give a good tip today, or, or when you buy your gas, or when you stop at the 7-Eleven, get some out, whatever, leave one of these that says, God is for you. Just a random act of kindness. Just look for an opportunity to be a blessing. I, I remember back when we were in college in Waxahachie, Texas, in Southwestern University, and, and uh, we were going to a little Assembly of God church while we were in college there in Waxahachie for a while. And we ran about 300 people. And I remember one day, I, I, I thought, you know, I thought, I've got to look for some opportunities. God can't steer a parked car. I want to know God's purpose for my life. I want to know it without a doubt. So I went to the pastor and I said, how can I help you? He said, I need help in the bus ministry. He said, I don't have anybody to go with me on Saturday mornings to go by all the bus families, knock on the door and say, bus will be by Sunday morning. Get ready. I don't have it. I said, I'm your guy. I'm your guy. So I started going with him on Saturday mornings, visiting the bus families. And then a few weeks went by, looking for opportunities to sow random acts of kindness. That's how you'll find. You see, it's through service you find your purpose. It's through service you find your purpose. It's through what? Your service. It's through your service. It's through your service, not setting. Through your service you find your purpose purpose. I said, what else do you need, Pastor? You see, we have a jail ministry. It, it, it meets every, every Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock at Dallas County Jail. That, at that time, was right downtown Dallas, right across the street where JFK got shot. And, and he said, we go down there every Sunday afternoon from Waxahachie at 3 o'clock, and we have a, a jail service. We need some help. I said, I'm your guy. Now, I'm working a full-time job. I'm married, living on the, the, the married dorms on campus. I'm taking 18 credits, working full-time at Kerr Glass Jar, full-time in Dallas. Full-time student, full-time married. But I said, I'm your guy. So we drive back in every, every Sunday afternoon. A few weeks went by. What am I doing? I'm looking for opportunities. What am I doing? I'm looking for, are you looking for opportunities? Or are you waiting for your bus? It's not coming. So I said, uh, what else do you need, Pastor, if I'm lying on Friday? And he said, we can't get anybody to help in children's church. We can't get anybody to help us. I, I, I said, I'm your guy. I didn't know anything about children's church. I really didn't care for their, re re I mean, I love their kids. <laughs> I really love their kids. We didn't have any kids at that time of our own, and I didn't want any kids at that time of our own. And, but I said, I'm your guy. What was I doing? Looking for a need. To fill it because I knew if I did if, if, if it was right and tight you like that if it was right and tight whoo I was on the right track if it wasn't God would let me know through seizing those opportunities and then number four the fourth question on how to know your why how to know what you need to motivate you to keep you going to give you hope 
uh, how to know your purpose that God has for your life. Because the most important thing in your life, what matters most, that's the big thing, is God's purpose, knowing it for your life because you don't want to waste it. Here's the fourth question in knowing God's purpose for your life. Who am I hanging with? Who am I running with? Who are my closest friends? You need to be on a team with people who know their God-given purpose. You need to be running with people who are running with something bigger, 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 bigger than themselves. You need to be around people who are doing good and big things, exploits for God. They know their God-given purpose, and they're pursuing it intentionally every day. You need to run with them, because when you run with somebody who's higher than yourself, they pull you up to their level. Does that make sense? Gene has always told me, if I want to learn how to golf, I don't even know how to golf, but he said, golf with somebody better than you. Didn't you tell me that, Gene? Because you'll rise up to their level. Who are you hanging with? Who are you running with? Average? Don't do it. Love them. Minister to them. Reach out to them. They could be your opportunity of service. But don't run with them or you'll be average. You're running with people who are confused, unhappy with every church, every relationship, every job. Don't run with them. Love them. Pray for them. Minister to them. But don't run with them because you'll have a confused life, unfulfilled and empty as well. Those four questions, did it help anybody today? Thanks for checking out this week's message. I want to invite you to take your next step by checking out our online community. Our purpose is to help you know God better. And one way to do that is to take Growth Track, where you'll find out what it means to belong to a church family. Another way is for you to get involved in a small group because life is better together. To take your next step, go to cotr.org slash online or reach out to us at online at cotr.org. Hope to hear from you soon. And don't forget that God is for you.